Hello everyone and welcome back to Mentos Plays Delver's Drop Alpha. Um, I did say that I was going to try to make a little bit more thorough of a view of this game. And so now that I have the chance to record it, I am back to do so. I'm going to just move my camera down here real quick because I forgot the UI was up at the top there. So we're going to jump in as the Sorcerer first. Um, just to kind of show off the new character a bit more. So, one of the things that you'll notice about the Sorcerer is that he is a bit slow to start up, but once he gets going, he becomes a little bit, uh, slidey. Like, if you stop holding the control key, he is going to keep moving for a little while, at least, before coming to a stop, because he is floating, and therefore, when you stop moving, he is able to kind of glide along for a little bit before he comes to a stop. Um, however, when you attack, you still come to an almost instant stop um, in order to cast your attack. Of course, he is a ranged class, so he does have a little bit more uh, ability against certain enemies, such as rats, where if you get close to them, they are a bit more dangerous. Um, one thing to note about him is that if you hit something with the actual staff itself, instead of the magic ball that comes out of it, that was a very bad example. But let's come over here to this crate. If I hit this crate with the staff itself, I only it takes two hits to break it. But if I hit that same kind of crate, which we can see right over here with one of the magic balls, it takes one hit to break it. So this is a key thing to remember when you're playing as the sorcerer here, is that if you try to get up close with enemies, you're going to be doing significantly less damage. Um, this does translate well to uh, enemies as well. Um, I showed it off on items because they're easier to make the point with. But if you notice, there are some enemies who, if you pay attention, I will kill them one hit with the magic ball, but it'll take me two hits to kill them if I get close enough to use the staff as a weapon itself. So now we got these blobs. One other thing to note that has changed a lot from the... Uh, pre-alpha demo that was released to the Kickstarter backers a little while ago and that was what was going around YouTube in the time of the Kickstarter um, as well as what was there at PAX East is that uh, some of the enemies I mean, the graphical style has changed a bit the style itself is still pretty steady but you'll notice a lot of things are a bit smaller now um, these plague rats can be kind of jerks but yeah, a lot of things are a bit smaller now, so you do have to kind of uh, pay attention to that. Ooh, screw you, Red. Can't get away. But yeah, uh, whoa. That knocked me back a lot, and we are getting low on health. But yes, uh, where was I? So uh, yeah, a lot of things like you'll notice, especially if you look at the slimes, it's very noticeable that the enemies have gotten a bit smaller since the earlier pre-alpha. Um, so that is one thing to note. There's one of very few actual... Uh, I mean, that is one of the uh, glitches I've run into in this build, which I talked about in my first episode, which is just that uh, sometimes when the items pop out of crates, they'll end up behind another crate, and they'll just kind of keep wiggling themselves along to until they reach an end point which can cause them to become inaccessible if they bounce behind a lantern or something of the sorts. That, I believe, is an explosive barrel? It is. Well, not explosive barrel, but explosive crate. Close enough. But yeah, so that's one thing that you have to watch out for, especially in this alpha. Um, whether that'll be something that they're able to prevent in the future or not, I don't know. But um, currently, if you blow up one of the boxes or something and there is a unbreakable object to the side of it, you can end up preventing yourself from having access to that item. So now, of course, another thing with the Sorcerer is if you hold two uh, directional arrows at once, he is going to fire at an angle. These ghosts have gotten much easier, if you can tell. Um, they don't seem nearly as violent, and they don't hop around as much. But once again, the graphical aesthetic has changed for them. I do very much like the new look, don't get me wrong, I just do want to point out the differences that I see between this and the pre-alpha. Uh, so that'll do... So we'll just continue clearing out these rooms as we go through. We are just a little bit shy of completely full health. We have one bit of armor missing. 
So, of course, for those of you who didn't see my earlier view of the alpha of this game, uh, what we are looking for is a switch, which will be somewhere on this floor, that will allow us to open the drop, which will be somewhere else on the floor, that'll take us down to the next floor. Currently, I believe there are four zones active in this pre-alpha. Uh, I think the farthest I've made is like two or three. So this is neither our switch nor our uh, drop. And you can't move these things around. They are all uh, weighted, so the more they weigh, the longer and harder they are to move. But uh, if you attack them, they do tend to move a little bit quicker. So see, we can push that slowly, or we can just smack it with our wand a couple times to move it quicker. And same thing with that door, whatever it is down there. Also, um, for those of you who haven't seen this before, if you notice when you walk up close to a room, you can kind of see inside it before you actually enter the room. It's actually more noticeable on the side rooms like this one. So that's an ability to kind of get a look at the layout of a room before you go in, but none of the enemies or anything will appear until uh, you have actually entered the room. Um, which is something I believe I have heard the devs mention is they want to try to find a way to balance out a little bit because right now it does create a situation where you kind of see things a bit awkwardly as all the enemies pop into existence when you enter the room. These candles are really annoying. They are much worse than the ghosts ever were. And these goblins are real fast. One thing that I didn't mention in my uh, initial video that I really like is seeing the sorcerer have such different movement mechanics than the uh, rogue. Um, we'll sh I'll point that out more when we do get to playing as the rogue because I want to do at least one run as each of these characters this video. Um, but the rogue and the sorcerer move in entirely different ways. Um, the sorcerer is a bit more floaty as he is floating above the ground uh, and you can feel that in the controls. Um, meanwhile, the rogue who walks on the ground is more stable, more as you would expect a uh, ground-based character to control. Um, he's not the floaty character that he was in the pre-alpha anymore. Now he is a ver very much a grounded, uh, steady character who, when you come to a stop, he stops right away. Um, so it does open up the ability for them to make these different classes not just uh, play differently because of their weapons, but also play differently based on how they move. You know, you look at something like Isaac or Splunky, um, and you see that most of the difference between characters is based on stats like, uh, you know, speed or attack strength, all that kind of stuff. Just to go with Isaac real quick, because I'm extremely familiar with every character in that game. You know, Maggie starts with more health, but she's slower. Isaac starts with a balance. You got Judas, who starts with higher attack, but he's got lower health. You've got, um... What else is there? You got Kane, who's faster with shorter range. All these characters have trade-offs of stats, but they all control the exact same. Um, given that you have the same abilities in a run, there won't be any difference in control between them. So we actually have a couple of switches in here. Four of them. That one spawned me a bad. Actually, I think both of those first ones spawned me a bad. So this kind of reminds me of uh, back in Link to the Past where there was a... Uh, where was it? Right at the end of the sanctuary when you're looking for... Uh, when you're trying to escape with the princess. There's that room where you get two lovers and one of them spawns a bunch of snakes and one of them actually opens the door. That kind of reminds me of that. This pit is probably not a good thing to fall into. The floatierness of, uh... Oh yeah, I forgot, the drop was always on the first room of the level. I should have pointed that out. Um, yeah, you don't actually have to find the drop. You just have to find the way to open it so that you can keep moving onwards. I kind of misspoke at the beginning there, but that's what I was trying to go for. Uh, but yeah, um... This whole uh, fact that the sorcerer controls or plays so much differently in terms of the way his movement is handled does kind of open up the door for something you don't see too often in which different character classes actually have completely different mechanics right down to the point of...
<laughs> right down to the point of how they actually move. So to show this off, you know, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I let go, and I come to a stop. There is no floatiness, there's no movement that carries on after I stop. It is all just as soon as I press the, as soon as I let go of the movement button, I stop. So I do think that opens up the door for if they use that to their advantage, uh, making multiple classes that really feel a lot different in all aspects, which I think is something really cool. They've already got it started with the sorcerer and the rogue, um, but you know I would love to see it continued. So the rogue, of course, um, being a more melee-based character, is going to do less damage per hit than the sorcerer. Um, if you pay attention to what the sorcerer was doing to enemies before, and what we're going to be doing with the rogue now, you will start to see that uh, difference in attack power. But of course this is made up for by having much more starting health. You've got three hearts, and you start with one shield, but you can get up to two. Um, uh, you start with, at least I think we started with one shield, but you can get up to two shields total. Which will allow you to uh, obviously make a little bit more progress in terms of defense of yourself. Obviously it doesn't matter if we fall down a pit like we did last time, but... So now this is a goblin room where these guys are going to be kind of jerks about things. But they aren't too hard. In fact, I would say these guys are actually easier as the rogue than as the sorcerer. Um, just because they do... Uh, try to get closer to you, which when you're playing as a sorcerer is kind of a pain because enemies who get close to you, you can't do as much damage to. When you're playing as a rogue who is a melee character and is meant to be played up close and personal with the enemies, then uh, it's a whole different story about how well it does. Let's open up this chest over here, get a lot of gold from it. If you aren't aware, this game is still very much an early alpha build. Uh, there is a lot more to be added content-wise, as well as a lot more to be tweaked and changed as time goes on. Before an alpha, I must say, it plays very well. I have a lot of fun with this. I haven't put too much time into it uh, since my last recording, simply because I have been kind of distracted between work, some uh, stuff outside of gaming, as well as watching Breaking Bad, uh, which I'm trying to get caught up on. I'm currently on Season 2, Episode 10, I think. But, uh, yeah, so that's uh, kind of why I haven't really played much of this as any, uh, since that video. Not because I don't want to play more of it, but because I really have been distracted with a whole lot of other stuff going on. And I wanted to make my next video my next impressions of it, instead of uh, getting into it more so beforehand. Uh, and I just didn't have the time to record, which is a big part of the reason why I would play something like, you know, Spelunky at night when I had no chance to record but could at least play a little bit instead of jumping into Delver's Drop. So after this, I will start to play this probably a little bit more commonly off-camera, but... So yeah, the Rogue, I think, is the biggest case where you can kind of see the difference between the pre-alpha build and the alpha build here because having been the character available in the pre-alpha, um, you can feel those differences a lot more than with, uh, one with, with the sorcerer who is brand new to this build. So the rats do kind of use a little bit of thought because you have to run away from them after you hit them or else they are going to explode on you. We are getting kind of low on health. I probably should go back to the start room, uh, back to the drop and pick up some of those crates and everything. Of course, there is no mini-map in implemented just yet, uh, so that is something that makes it a little bit harder to navigate. Um, that will be, I'm sure, included in the later versions of the game, but for now, it's not something that's currently available. We got some of these wooden spike blocks, which are destroyable. We got some metal thing over here, which I'm not sure what the purpose of is. And let's see now. If we walk down here, there's another door. I didn't really mean to come in here, uh, quite honestly. I kind of wanted to delay my entry into the next room because, quite frankly, I am low on health and because I do not want to die. Um, but yes, I am going to need to find the drop, or not, or not, 
Give me a second to take a drink real quick here. Okay, so back to the rogue. Um, I showed off the sorcerer a little bit more in the first video, so I wanted to show off the rogue a little bit more in this one. Um, also, I do kind of like the uh, melee style a little bit more at the moment. Um, it's kind of hard to say if that's really personal preference or anything. I do feel, and um, we do start with two shields, not one. That was my uh, mistake. But I do feel like uh, there are a lot. It all depends on the game whether I prefer casters or melee characters. But throughout any of them, um, I do tend to prefer the casters. I think the only reason I don't particularly go with the sorcerer right now is I feel like more of the enemies are beneficial to the rogue than they are to the sorcerer. Um, obviously, not having even close to all the enemies in the that will be in the final build in makes a difference there. But currently, you know, the sorcerer isn't really good against the rats. But other than that, and probably the ghost too, but other than that, the uh, scorpions the rogue is better against. Um, at least in my opinion, the goblins he's much better against. The slimes aren't very difficult with either character, unless uh, you make a mistake like I did there and run into them. Um, the bats are a little bit easier in my opinion with the rogue. So a lot of it comes down to how I feel like the current balance is, um, which is that the melee combat is a little bit more effective. Because there are a lot of enemies that attack you by running into you, which means that they're going to have to get close to attack. Um, and so that means that, sorry, my leg was falling asleep. That means that uh, it makes the characters who have a good melee attack a little bit more viable than the ones who have a good ranged attack, in my opinion. Uh, I'm sure there are differ differentiating opinions. I haven't been on the forums and the chat as much as I have been lately, but uh, I do know that there are some people who have been preferring the Sorcerer. Um, but just my personal preference, I think that the current run of enemies in the game, there are a few more of them that are beneficial to have melee combat for than there are to have uh, ranged combat. And that makes me a little bit more tempted to keep my eye on the close range character than the long range characters. Now I'm sure this is something that will be a little bit more balanced in the long run, where there are more benefits to playing with a ranged character. Um, but in the current build, I haven't seen all that many uh, benefits to it. So that's just my personal preference of the two characters, um, and a little bit of why. But once again, with this being early alpha, um, obviously the balancing of the game and everything is not all done yet. Uh, it's not even close to being all done yet, I should make clear. So a lot of this comes down to, you know, with the enemies that have been implemented in the game yet, what do I prefer? And in that sense, I do prefer the rogue. Okay, we kind of got a little bit of damage there by me not reacting quickly. Die, ghosty, die, before you fire. The rats, I like the fact they don't just immediately come after you. You kind of have to do something to them to make them interested in you. It makes it much easier to kind of work the room out to where it's going to be viable for you to run away from their explosion before you get into killing them. Um, I think that's a very good touch because otherwise these kids could get very hassle. Uh, very much of a hassle. Let's go ahead and kill that one. Wow, he blew that block back far. So yeah, um... Where was I going with that thought? Uh... Yeah, since you can't move while you're attacking, since you do automatically come to a stop when you hit the attack button, it does mean that to have that ability to... Uh, give yourself the ability to get away from them before attacking them, uh, it does become a big thing in the game, in my opinion because it means that you don't have to worry quite so much about how you're going to handle them and can worry more so about handling all the enemies in the room as you need to. That scorpion is probably was probably really close to attacking me right there. These candles are really, really difficult, and so are the scorpions, honestly. The scorpions might actually be a little bit easier with the sorcerers since they do attack from 
I mean, since once they attack, they move very quickly. Uh, but in terms of actually uh, hitting them, it's not really much of a difference between the two. Oop. I say as I get hit by it and almost die. So yeah, I guess, uh, you know, there are reasons to play the Sorcerer, don't get me wrong. I will be playing quite a bit of more of him as time goes on here. Um, I just wanted to point out that, you know, I do notice a little bit of a difference in uh, the number of enemies that I feel are easier with the Rogue than the number of enemies that I feel are easier with the Sorcerer. We are down to our last hit, so I think the logical decision here, the smart decision, is to enter the drop, which will take us to a room full of uh, boxes and barrels and everything, and that'll let us heal up, hopefully. Obviously, uh, we aren't doing too hot here. Ooh, going down the drop apparently heals you two hearts. That is something that I just found out now, and it is very good to know. Whether that's intentional or not, I would have I have no way to knowing, but... The other thing that should be added here is, in the final version, there is going to be a... Uh, what's it called? A uh, leveling system. So, all the little blue blobs that you see floating at me after I kill an enemy, I believe those are meant to be... Uh, experience floating toward me, um, which is what that little blue crystal bar in the top right would uh, um, bleh, would assumedly imply. Um, obviously that system isn't in place yet, so it's not really something that you can see the effects of, but that'll also change up how things go in this game as you move further, as you'll be seeing more and more abilities that you can increase and stats that you can increase on top of the new items that you'll be finding and all that. So this game definitely will open up a lot once the full version is out and you can start seeing all the effects of leveling and items. Uh, in case you didn't know, the, they are going to have randomly generated items a la, you know, a Diablo type game where you'll get, you know, maybe there are X amount of base types of weapons but then, you know, this one is a cracked stone blade so it's not as strong as if I found, you know, a forged steel blade or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's just something to remember is that there is a lot of content still to be added to this game. I hate these candles. I hate them with a passion. And of course the bat has to be the one to do me in. So I think that was a good second look at the game. Uh, this will be back for sure. I absolutely love playing this. Um, I tried to focus a little bit on what is different between this version and the old version, um, as well as to explain where things are going and kind of the different situations that my uh, opinions might change on. But um, in general, I will try, uh, play more of this, probably with a bit more of that feel, as well as probably with more of a Let's Play feel of, you know, letting you know what's going on and all that. Um, but in its current very early alpha, you know, there's pretty much attack enemies and collect health to get back to full health. There's not a whole lot else going on at the moment, um, which is not a problem by any means, mind you. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, when it comes to more standard Let's Play commentary, um, instead of just comparison and thoughts on the game design, it is a lot harder to put together on a game that is an early alpha and doesn't quite have all those speech and isn't feature complete because there's a lot of stuff that is not there to comment on. But for now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Take care everyone.